Hello, fun people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that size and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're making a DIY organic herbicide that will kill everything. And by that, I mean we're making homemade vinegar that you can use for cooking as well. You just cannot use this for pickling. It's not high enough percentage. Um, but cooking wise, you could do this. This is the exact same way that apple cider vinegar is made. You name it. It's super easy to do. I'm in the kitchen. I'm literally making like jam and bread and everything. It's raining outside as well. So boredom becomes me. The random bubbling sound you hear in the background is literally my jelly or my jam being made. I use frozen berries. So it takes a really long time to get the water out. Anyways. I digress. So I'm cleaning out literally the kitchen and I have these almost dehydrated oranges that we didn't eat. You can use raisins, you can use apple peels, you name it. It just has to have sugar in it. That's the moral of the story. What you use is up to you. If you use apples, obviously you're going to make apple cider vinegar. I'm using oranges, so we're going to make orange cider vinegar, I guess you could say. So you're going to need some fruit and any quantity really does not matter. I would suggest at least the quarter of your jar, whatever you're using should be fruit. Um, if you can get it closer to half the jar, perfect. Raisins, you name it. And then this is my jar. Um, this jar's old. It is from, I don't know where it's from. It is not meant for canning or anything. So I'm just gonna place my vinegar in here. And then inside of this, I'm using tap water. People will say you have to use filtered water or reverse osmosis water. The reason for that is because bacteria um, doesn't exist in the chlorinated water. Um, and so you, you won't ferment. However, I've never experienced that before. Maybe a delay in fermentation, but I've never had like a total will not ferment type scenario. So with that being said, I just have regular Saskatoon water in here. Now Saskatoon use chlor uses chloramine, so it's even worse than chlorine. It literally stays in, even if you allow it to evaporate overnight, it's still hanging out in your water, unfortunately. This whole sealing top mechanism is not necessary because we're actually going to use cheesecloth for the top of this. So yeah. Okay, so first step is take your jug of water and your container and then peel and or mash, just make your fruit small. Also merch, I have that. I never advertise it, but this apron's adorable. So I'm going to basically put everything in here, peels, the centers, you name it, because these are super dehydrated and no good anymore. So you literally want to put everything in there. Um, the smaller you make it, the faster it'll ferment, but for the most part, you just put it in in whichever way. So I'm gonna get these three peeled into here, and then I'm going to add a half cup of sugar into this jar, only because the um, fruit I have, I don't have a ton of it. I was actually expecting to have more from my berries, but I, I didn't, so unfortunately. And all we're doing here is going to ferment. So it's gonna turn into alcohol, wine <laughs> type, uh, stuff and then we're going to continue to allow it to be exposed to oxygen so then it eventually will turn into vinegar so step one is putting all this in and then we'll skim this out in a little while so one thing to note when we're doing vinegar like we're doing right now um it takes about 60 days again if you're using ro water or filtered water or you're allowing your water to sit overnight and you have chlorinated water, not chloramine water, this process will be a little bit quicker, but for me, it's about 60 days. Um, so this will not be ready for weed killing until, what day is it today? The beginning of June, so end of August, but it's still pretty deadly even after a month. So if I, get into a bind, I'll just go in there. And this is literally how you make apple cider vinegar. You would just literally use apple rinds instead. So if you go apple picking soon to make like your um, jams or your jelly or your pie fillings, save the rinds, save the cores, you name it, all of it can go into making a wonderful vinegar. And then after this is done and fermented, you can actually put it in your compost. And 
It's basically like a compost accelerator, but a DIY version. So that's fun as well. And this is organic. Like you obviously can use inorganic fruits and vegetables, but if you're using organic fruits and vegetables, it's an organic herbicide hands down. I'm literally redoing everything, you guys. I have a cast iron pan that the hubby decided to put through the dishwasher. <laughs> I have to re-season that. It's wonderful. We took a wire brush to it. I was like, here you go. Here's your job for the afternoon. Take a drill with a wire brush to it and you get to fix it. So we did that. I have to season it with canola oil, which is right here. And then I got to bake it in the oven. I'm making like a homemade garlic bread, a regular bread. I kind of, I'm French, so I like like a sugary kind of bread almost. And then I'm making jam. Is that all I'm doing? I think so, hopefully. I should really be cleaning my house, <laughs> but I'm not. It's raining tomorrow too, so I'll have all day tomorrow. Actually, no, that's a lie. Tomorrow I am doing cheese blocks. I'm gonna wax a bunch of cheese. So this jar is done. Okay, I'm gonna put my half cup of sugar in there and then I'll show you how to seal this guy up. All right, so this is gonna come down to what you're using it for. If you're using it simply for a herbicide to kill off the weeds, and by the way, this will kill everything, so you have to apply it only to the weeds you wanna kill. You cannot just spray this on your lawn. You'll kill your lawn. Um, so with this, what we can do is we can either use a cheesecloth type thing if we're going to actually use this for food, because fruit flies and other little sugar hungry demons will try to get into this and the best way to prevent against that is to put the cheesecloth over top and this is a reusable cheesecloth um, but nonetheless and then I'm just gonna put a hair tie over this and leave it now I'm gonna stir it once every two ish days because you can get mold on top if you get mold on top it does not mean it's junk you just have to stir it to, to get rid of that mold if you let it go for too long though the mold will build up more and more so make sure you're stirring it on a regular basis. Store it in a non-sunny location. So I'm actually just gonna put it right on my island here um, where there's no direct sun on it and it'll remind me that I need to actually stir it. Now, if you're using this plainly for a herbicide to kill off weeds, uh, you don't have to do the cheesecloth top because the bugs will get in, they'll drown, and it's gonna be sprayed outdoors anyway, so it doesn't really matter, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is it. You're gonna let this sit now for 30 days. It's going to smell and taste like wine, and then it's going to smell and taste like vinegar. After this is completed, I can do a follow-up video on how to do it, but essentially all I'm gonna do is turn this guy upside down, uh, drain all the vinegar into a different jar and then remove the vegetable or the fruit cuttings and throw those in the compost and then all I'm left with is the vinegar itself and that's it literally vinegar the same vinegar you eat everywhere else so very very cool and you can use dried fruits for this as well something to keep in mind frozen fruits um, or just like bits and bobs of fruits will work too so I hope you guys found this helpful. This is an effective herbicide. It will it will kill everything. I can guarantee you that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.